Initial growth phase, we talked about that. Always remember, always remember, you set the example as the leader. The third phase in this book is rapid growth. During this phase of your business, you realize it's time for you to begin to strive to establish yourself as a market leader. As a market leader, you need to change yourself into a team builder, a coach, a planner, an effective communicator. Some of you all at that stage right now, you need to be asking yourself, how well am I doing in this rapid growth phase? How well am I doing? How well am I communicating? Am I still micromanaging? You know, time sheets and, 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 and you know what I mean? I have, it's four of us on our team. Don't have time to micromanage. Set the direction, set the expectation, establish the deliverable because I have a meeting to be at. <clears throat> the success of your business depends on your ability to make this transition. You gotta make the transition. I can help you get there. But woe if you, to you if you don't make that transition. Don't worry, you will have casualties of war. You know what, when I say casualties of war, what I mean? You get to this phase, and those people that were there when you started, maybe your cousin, your brother, father, whoever, a friend, it's time to move. You gotta move, you're in rapid growth mode. Everybody can't keep up. And when they can't keep up, you have to move because you have to make that transition. And if you have to move and they can't move with you, I gotta go. They become a casualty of war. I have had them myself. Love you, we had good times, but I have to go. Chance, I always said that, I don't need to say that. You must be prepared. So the, the, the final one is the continuous growth phase. So it says during this phase of your business, you really need to explore avenues for growth to transform yourself into a change catalyst. This is, you're at the premium level now. You're in the big leagues. Transform yourself into a change catalyst, an organization builder a strategic innovator and thinker and chief of culture. Very strong words. Where are you in that process? This book will help walk you through that. We just gotta find out how many we can order in bulk order and I'm gonna get you a book. I've had mine for over 10 years. Don't lose it. In this phase, you really discover that Opportunity does not send letters of introduction. So you must be prepared. Okay, so that's leading at the speed of growth. We're gonna get into that later once, once you get your books. You can thank me in advance. You're very welcome. <laughs> Familiarize <laughs> yourself with this project. So as we move down the road, we're, we're, we're charting the course. What are some of the things that, that, that you have to do that are a prerequisite for you to be ready for any given opportunity? You know, you heard Kerry talking about the uh, elevated skywalks, you know, and things like that, and, and, and all the prefab uh, steel uh, assemblies that, that will happen off site. And, but you know, there's always things that we have to do on site, of course, and so, but you gotta be ready. Maybe there's some miscellaneous steel and attachments and those types of things, maybe even some erection, all sorts of things. So I'm thinking of Dory here because she's our, our steel lady. But you gotta be ready. To, to, to talk about, uh, outside of those prefab assemblies, what is it that I can look at? Who can I team with? Can I be part of that prefab group? You know what I mean? And so, you know, ask those questions. You know what I mean? Get yourself ready. Know who the players are. You know, we talked about, you guys know who the owner, BJC, Jacobs, HOK, of course the master builders, ACW. You know, one of the 10 most frequently asked questions. What is ACW? Albert C. Clayco Wilson. Understand the schedule and where your scope fits. So as we as we try to keep you guys updated along the way, you know, you need to understand what's out there time-wise, next quarter or a year from now, whatever. Keep keep those, keep a notebook. Understand what's going on. Understand the different complexities of the project. You know, whether it be site logistics or whether it be just understanding what's in the drawings, what's in the bit packages. And um, and we're here. If you got a question, don't understand this that's in the bid package, there's some duplication, there's some conflict between what's in the spec, and, you know, and what's in, you know, what's in, how do we deal with those, with those conflicts? We're gonna put it in writing. 
something so simple, right? Can you imagine how many people, project management level people, in, in my mind, I, I just, I don't, I can't fathom it. Why you don't put things in writing? Why you don't ask for clarification? You know, why you don't reference that spec section and the other spec section where it conflicts? I don't get it. Project complexity, what, you know, know what your union affiliations are, because obviously people have asked, is this a union job? This is a union job. If at any point it's not, then I guess they'll tell us and we'll deal with that. From what we know now, this is a union job. I've represented the owner for a lot of years, and one thing that you need to understand when you're dealing with a very complex owner, when I talk about complex, I don't know that it rises any higher complexity than DJ. I just don't know that it does. You know, I was on the, you know, you heard Anna talking about the capital budget cycle. And I was caught up in that for all those years. You know, we had, we, I mean, we would have to work overtime just to, just to do all the, all the budgets for the, for the capital budgeting cycle. And then we had to get into what we call multi-year modeling. We got to look out 10 years and budget all of that. And, and uh, I, I don't know that I missed that, Anna, but, uh, but, but it, was, it was great. You know, you learn a lot, but this owner, focuses on three key areas, scope, schedule, and budget. Where do you fit in all of that in your, in your understanding? We're going to have to go through that because in my mind, in this world, we're doing two things. We're either planning to build something or we're building something. One of those two. Insert yourself into the process. And that's sort of what we're doing now. We're inserting you into the process. We got a long way to go. We got a lot of meetings. A lot of you come up to me and say, hey, we, we need to meet next week. Can we meet? And I'm like, OK, call Jennifer. Let's get all this. You know, we got a lot of meeting to do. We got a lot of work to do. We got a long way to go. And those who are faint at heart, I got to go. You will become my first casualty of war. Right? I would like to be politically correct about that, but I can't be. I need you here. I need you committed. I need you meeting with me. I need you handling the things that I ask you to handle, bring back, so we can solve your issues. So we can keep you positioned. Keep you positioned for these opportunities. And to the extent you can't do that, I have to go. I have to move on. So ask yourself that, are you, are, you, are you ready for that? We're gonna maintain constant communication. We just talked about that. Learn survival tactics. You know what I mean? We don't, some of this stuff is a year out. Two years, two and a half years. You know, we gotta eat. We gotta eat until then. So we're gonna have to learn some survival tactics with the other clients that we have. How do we, you know, how do we sort of generate some new business and while, all the time while we're working strategically on this? I'm going to get through this. I'm going to go back to this. Economic business climate. You know they say 50% of all business fail in the first year and 80% in five. Interesting, interesting stat, you know. Dwayne, you've been, what, 20 years now? 20, Dwayne and I took a construction management course in 1991. Was it 91 and 92, was it? Something like that? Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, all right. It was 91 or something like that, but Dwayne and I was in class together when he, when he started. And Saber Surveying is doing great work now. 80% in five. Wow. They're just telling us we ain't going to make it. I mean, that, that's what they're saying there. But you know what? That's what they say. We say something different. Critical understanding of changes. There are changes that we're going to have to make when I'm with you along the way. Good and bad changes. Staffing resources. Assessing your organization. You guys have copies of this. I'm not ready to hit each one of these, but, 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 but look at your staffing resources, all these areas from your experience, your senior level PM, your financial spend, Art to talk about that. You know, we'll get into that later. What's your EMR? Why is it what it is? When was your last lost time accident? When is it coming off? Who's your carrier? What are they saying? All of those, you know, because owners don't really have time to dig into that. They say, what's your EMR? If it's over one, psh, you know what I mean? So I want to know, why, why is it over one? 
You know what I mean? So we can at least go back and say it's over one because of these two incidents, and they're going to fall off in four months. You know, they only don't have time to ask that question. So we need to. That's why I said I said we need to send it up. We need to. We need to talk. You got. You got to communicate with us, right? Assessing your organizations, maintain good standing with the union affiliations. Uh, your 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 product experience. One thing that that this project is likely to have. Is, is, is a wrap up, which is, which is an OSIP. I, I th I, I'm not sure that that's 100%. It is 100%. So, o owner controlled insurance program. It's in your top 10 most frequently asked questions. What is an OSIP? It's a wrap up insurance policy where, the, where you, know, you, get, you get a Marsh or a Zurich or Aon come in and they say to the, to the owner, you know, you got a project big enough that, that, that warrants a, an OSIP. We can cover all your folks, contractors, and their people, all the trades mainly. Uh, on the job cheaper than you would pay if they all had their individual covers. Uh, there's probably some debate out there as to whether that is actually true or not. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm certain it is because I'm one of the debate. I've been on four of them. And so I'm, you know, but hey, the owner wants to do it, let's do it. Sometimes it does help with efficiency and, and tracking and things like that. So it does have its value. But I, I, I just wish they wouldn't sell all the savings to it. You know? On the ballpark, you know, I was the one at the end of the project when, when Marsh came back and said to the Cardinals, um, we're not going to save you that $2 million that we told you. The Cardinals said, no, I want that $2 million. You promised me we would. So the Cardinals came to us, came to Hunt, and Hunt came to me and said, find the $2 million. Otherwise, they're going to take it out of our last pay act. Find it. Don't just look for it. Find it. So the analysis had to find those firms who either had miscalculated certain things in their, in their labor and, and things like that. And here's a big spreadsheet, right? 75 subcontractors, $273 million to reconcile. I found it. But I didn't find it without hurting a few people. Don't like to do that. Don't like to do that. So hopefully, you know, I, I'm, on this, I'm on this assignment. And what I'm hoping to do uh, with Mike Brown's help, is Mike out here? Mike, you know, Mike, Mike's going to, to be part of our, our supportive services for, for the wrap up, making sure that as we put the numbers together uh, for those trades, I don't believe it's applicable to professional services, so that we can help you. So you don't get into a situation at the end where, where now there's a true up that they need to, to do and, and, we're, and we're coming back to you asking for money. We're going to be through with this real, real quick. Assessing your organization. What does your industry credibility look like? What do people say about you? Do you even know? You know, or does your ego make you think people are saying something that they aren't saying? But you really need to know what people are saying. I hear things. You need to know what people are saying about you. Know that. Make sure that, that, that you control the perception. Some people will, you know, they, they, it just happens. But you create the perception for you and your organization. Industry alliance and partnership. Maintain those relationships with, with the people in like businesses so that you can partner. And, you know, everybody says joint venture. They don't do joint ventures anymore. All right, stop saying joint venture. <coughs> their partnerships, their alliances, they don't create the real, the real st corporate structure that's required to do a joint venture. They just say joint venture. So when you hear that, ask, is it a real JV or is it a partnership? And then they go, oh, it's really not a joint venture. We're, it's just an alliance. You know, we're going to really sub it to you. But we're going to sell it to the owner. Tell the owner we're, we're in JV. Are you, you okay with that? We're going to say JV. But it ain't no JV. Because they ain't splitting their fee with you like that. Right? So I've been through the real JV. And I know how the split of the fee, the general conditions, and the management staff, and the accounting, and, and all of that has to happen. So educate yourself so you know. So people can't just tell you anything. And because you're excited about the opportunity, you say, okay, I'm, do I'm in and they're going to rape you clear as day. Professional affiliations. 
because so much of what I do is in the healthcare industry, and this project is in the healthcare industry. Here's some organizations that, uh, that, that that's on your on your on your copy. You need to look into this. Learn about these organizations: Missouri Hospital Association (MHA). You know, architects, engineers, CM, vendors, equipment. You know what I mean? Big annual conference and trade show in, in November down in Tantera. I go every year, so I can meet the vendors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, you know, they play golf. Now. Come on. They play golf and then, you know, Murphy's got a big deal that they do and, you know, y'all making me say stuff I ain't supposed to be saying. But, but, you know, we have fun down there every year. But it's a big trade show where you walk when you meet. You know, I, I met construction management companies that I didn't know out of Kansas City and, and you know, places like that. And you, and you connect. You know, you, you can always continue to build your network. Uh, Moshi, which is sort of the, the local arm of, of ASHI, Missouri Society of Healthcare Engineers. You know, join that. It's 150 bucks a year. You know what I mean? But the, every month there's some sort of edu education class. In September it's the golf tournament. I like that one. Avail yourself of the, I go to these. And I wonder sometimes, where are the African Americans at? Where are they? Always plenty of women, that's always great. Where, where are the African Americans at? I see Abner there every now and then. You know, we have to avail ourselves. If we're going to say to BJC and Jacobs and PMO that we want to be part of this process, we want to grow, we want to learn, and we want to build. I mean, how, do you, how do you do that without understanding the, the professional affiliations and things like that that we need to have? Okay? Assessing yourself. You have to do that. Assess yourself. I'm going to move this thing forward. Know what you don't know. How many of you know what you don't know? Nobody raising their hand. I know what I don't know. I know what I don't know. So I don't need to sit and uh, pull the wool over your eyes and, and try to talk all big and technical. I know what I don't know, but I know who knows, right? I can call Anwar. Anwar and write me a letter, give me some data. You know what I mean? Then I can talk from a position of strength, right, and education. Sometimes we don't do that. We don't want nobody to know we don't know. You know, it's funny, right? But it's true. We don't want people to know that we don't know. It's okay. That's what we ain't figured out yet. It's okay not to know. But it's not okay when you can't go get the data and learn it. Don't get discouraged, because along this is a long journey. Like I said, it's got a long string on it. Be persistent, be prepared, and be creative. I call them killer bees. Be creative. Be creative. What you're working now, or trying to do now, may not work. Look at somebody that may be doing what you want to do. Go talk to them. Find a way to emulate what they're doing. But be creative. Right? I'm reminded of a story of a young man that was on the streets of New York with a, with a shoe shine stand. Everybody's walking down past him. And he's saying to one sir, you look like you need a shoe shine. Can I help you? He said, no, I'm busy. Got to get to a meeting. Man, you look like you need a shoe shine. Can I take care of you? No, nope, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Finally, the young man, after about five or six people just passed it right on by, he thought. And he turned and he said, 97, 98, 99, 100. He said, excuse me, sir. Today's my birthday. To celebrate another year of life, I offer the 100th person who crosses my shoe shine, a free shine. Would you give me the honor? He said, well, sure. The man jumped up on there, he shined his shoes, he performed the service. The man got down and he said, thanks, young man, you did a great job. And as the man got ready to walk away, the man turned and said, by the way, son, how much do you normally charge? And he said, five dollars. He said, five dollars? He said, yes, sir, five dollars. He said, here's 10, keep the change. As that man walked and he, and he said, Goodbye to him, he turned and said 97, 98, 99, 100. Being creative, right? Figuring out a way to make it happen when it's not happening, right? Don't give up. When I think about business and all the stuff we have to do every day, and all the stress that we have to deal with, you know, I think about and compare it to life in the wild. There was a story I read one time, really short. It said, every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up, right? And he must 
chase that gazelle or he will starve to death. That same morning that gazelle wakes up, he must run faster than that lion or he's going to be eaten. But it really doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. What matters? When the sun rises in the morning, you better be running. You don't take nothing else today. When you leave that door, out that door, you get up in the morning, you better be running because life got something waiting on you. So what's the SWAT announcement? You guys have, have uh, they, they passed out the SWATs, right? Two of, them are, two of them are case studies. I'm not going to go through them, but you got you to read this. We're going to set up, we're gonna set up a, a follow-up session uh, in about 30 days where we're going to talk about the case studies and we're going to talk about um, your SWOT analysis. Read it. There's a lesson plan. It's, 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 there's three pieces. Um, uh, two of them have, have, uh, have case studies attached and the other one is actually a lesson plan which on the back where you can list your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. That's what a SWOT is. Anybody ever did a SWOT analysis on the company? Beautiful. So you're not starting over, so we can just, we'll, we'll pick up for where you are now. Do we need to add anything? Do we need to change anything? Because obviously our opportunities and threats are always growing and changing like that, right? So sort of like a fluid document. Business. So we're going to set up in about 30 days a work session, and we're going to come and and we want to talk about it. You remember me saying we're going to help each other run our businesses more effectively. We're going to talk amongst ourselves. What challenges are we having? Why is this a particular threat for, for this guy or this group of people than it is for me? We're going to talk about that. I need you to complete it because I'm going to read out, out to each one of you. You're either going to say, I'm working on it, I ain't touched it, or I'm done. I'm going to have mine done or revise, because I actually already have one, right? That's what we're going to do. If we're going to get down this journey, but when it's time for those, those bed towers and, and everything else, the ancillary services that have to be built on that, we have to be ready. It's so much more than getting the drawings from Carrie's group and bidding it. God is so much more than that. So that's what the assignment is. I just don't have time to, to go through it. We've blown through this time a lot quicker than I thought. So that, that should go in your folder. Uh, if you want to put it, if you want a three-hole punch in and put it in your binder just so that um, you, can, you can have it there. Um, I, have the, I have the lesson plan electronically um, where you could actually just go in and put your, uh, put your strengths and weaknesses on it. But, but, but you have to read it. You have to read it. You can't just sit down and start listing things. You have to understand what makes a strength a strength, what makes a threat a threat. Okay, read the article from the Milken Institute. Very important. Like some of us don't do a lot of reading. Maybe we haven't done a lot of reading since college. But you gotta read it. You gotta read it. You will remember, you will remember these things as we move down the road and you realize you didn't take the time to do it. And I ask you about it. And I ask you about it. I can't penalize you. That doesn't make sense. But it helps me to understand what I'm dealing with. What I'm dealing with. So I appreciate everybody's uh, commitment to, do I have a, do I have a commitment? Do I have a commitment? Wonderful. We're going to do this thing together. I think we're just about done, so we don't need to talk about the SWOT analysis again. That you have. That you have. Defining true prosperity. You know, years ago, um, I had to define prosperity for myself because I only saw it in terms of uh, you know, checks and balances. Somebody writing me a check. You, go to the bank and deposit it, and ooh, you, got, you, know, you get 10 grand, you only owe two grand, that means you got eight, right? That's not what true prosperity is. I'm not gonna read this, but just at the bottom, which is the law of wealth, you care less who you are, what your background is, your education, family history, race, or gender. It works entirely through consciousness, right? Prosperity starts from here. Shouldn't do that, it starts from here. 
So therefore, to prosper does not necessarily mean to possess a great deal of fortune, although earning large sums of money, operative word, large sums of money, can be one of the byproducts of a prosperity consciousness. Right? Albert Einstein said, seek not to become a person of success. That don't sound right. right? Seek not to become a person of success. Because what comes with success? Right? Money, cars, all that stuff. Seek not to become a person of success, but rather seek to become a person of value. And success is just a byproduct of your value. Right? That Jefferson City trip, what was that about? Value. That was about value, nothing else. We're going to work on that. I want to help you. I heard Arthur mention about attitude. And we said, you know, how important it's going to be to maintain the right attitude as we walk down this road uh, together, right? I read one time that the greatest discovery known to man was when he discovered that a man could alter his future just by changing his attitude. Did you know that? I get calls sometimes, people are frustrated, and, and uh, there was an architect who remained nameless, uh, nameless uh, who, who sent an email about this particular session. You know, did, you know, you know, should I come? I've been trying to get work with PDNC for years and can't get it. And you know, can you go? I think you can go that pop up door there. Uh, I've been trying to get work for PDNC for years. It ain't happening. I don't think it's worth it. We don't have these kind of hours to, you know what I mean? I responded. There are no guarantees. But if you really want to stay on the course, you can give up. You can choose to give up. That's your choice. But I'm here if you want to talk. If you want to get back on the road, try this again. Why was it that the um, master architect decided your firm's qualification didn't align with that? I mean, there are reasons behind that. So how do we, how do we address it? Don't give up. Change your attitude. I think this is the end. So I think this is the last slide, guys. So action items. When you leave here, you're going to assess your organization. You're going to assess yourself personally and professionally. You're going to leave here with a superior attitude and a superior state of mind. Interesting. Superior attitude and a superior state of mind. I was watching a movie one time. I, I get a lot of quotes from movies. I mean, I, I peel it off and I, it's there. Right? So I'm, my, one of my favorite actors is Steven Seagal. Yeah, I like him too. Somebody like him. So he, he, he was in the movie Hard to Kill. And they, they thought they killed him, and he was, he was, he was hidden away in a, in a farm somewhere where he was uh, rehabilitating so he could go back and kill these people that tried to kill him. His partner, who was another cop, brought him a bunch of guns and weaponry because they were getting ready. He was getting ready to, to, to go back because was, he was fighting against a senator and, I mean, some, some very uh, powerful people. And his partner said to him, he said, you know we can't win this. And Steven said, what do you, what do you mean? Why, why not? And his partner said, we're out man and we're out gun. We can't win. And Steven looked at him and he said, you know why we're going to win? And he said, no, why? He said, because we have a superior attitude and a superior state of mind. And I can tell you that was something that I adopted years ago. Superior attitude and superior state of mind. I realize that if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. You know, people are sometimes intimidated by, you know, people and positions and titles and opportunities. And, you know, is it really for me? Is it really, you know what I mean? Let that fear go. Go and prove yourself. Complete the SWOT analysis. We're going to reach out to you in 30 days. Set this up. And I want to hear rounding, been working on it. I'm not saying you got to have it done. Don't tell me you haven't read it. Implement the killer bee. Be creative, be persistent, be patient, and most important, be brave, because that's what it's going to take. 
That's what it's gonna take to get to the end. Be brave, don't let fear take you. At the end of it, I want you to speak life into your business. And this is absolutely, positively the last slide. Speak life into your business. Did you know that life and death is in the power of the tongue? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I'm going to tell you, like I used to tell my kids, I type this and I put this in a frame and put it on the wall of their bedroom as they were growing up. So when they came in the door, boom, there it was. What you tell yourself you are, you will be. What you allow yourself to be reflects who you have already told yourself you are. That was profound to me. So find yourself telling yourself who you are. If you make that agreement with me today, that you will tell yourself who you are, I can guarantee you what, what, whatever's for you down the road, in terms of that success and that wealth building opportunity, you'll blow it right out of the water. Because the people outside of these walls, they have no idea what we're capable of. Quiet. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you.